Good morning. I hope you all are doing well. I'm sure that most of you saw my email earlier in the week sharing the news from our bishop that we will continue to worship online only until at least May 24th. It breaks my heart for us to be apart another month, but I know it's important that we do all we can to keep everyone safe and to care for the health of one another. I'm so grateful at this time for your patience, for the ways that you have been caring for one another, the ways that you have been serving as the church, um, even though we can't be in the building together. Now, I'd like to spend a few minutes this morning sharing with you the scripture um, that I'll be reading and preaching from this Sunday. And I'd like to ask you to reflect on a few things as we prepare our hearts for Sunday morning. This reading is from John's Gospel chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Later, Jesus himself appeared again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter told them, I'm going fishing. They said, we'll go with you. They set out in a boat, but throughout the night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize it was Jesus. Jesus called to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, No. He said, Cast your nets on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they did, and there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he wrapped his coat around himself and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from the shore, only about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you've just caught. Simon Peter got up and pulled the net to shore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them. Yet the net hadn't torn, even with so many fish. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Son of John, do you love me more than these? And Simon replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Take care of my sheep. He asked a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was sad that Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? He replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I assure you that when you were younger, you tied your own belt and walked around wherever you wanted. When you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and another will tie your belt and lead you where you don't want to go. He said this to show him the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After saying this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. So I just want to start by asking the question, what images or what words, what phrases stood out to you as I read that passage? And to consider how God might be speaking to us, whether you're hearing this Friday morning, Saturday, or even on Sunday morning during worship, how might God be speaking to us today in our context through the words of this passage? Now, I've been reading this passage for several weeks, and I keep coming back to one realization. These disciples, just a handful of days earlier, had been running to the tomb, and when they got there, they saw it empty. Then, while they were hiding in the upper room, Jesus appeared to them. He let Thomas tux, touch the scars in his hands. These disciples had seen Jesus raised from the dead. 
They had seen it with their own eyes. They had seen the promise of the resurrection come true. But now, just a short time later, here they are not sure what to do next. So they go fishing. And by fishing, I mean they went back to what they had been doing before they met Jesus. They had witnessed the resurrection firsthand. And here they are, just going back to normal. The resurrection's old news at this point, so it's back to business as usual. Are you kidding? How could they just go back to normal after all they had seen and experienced? There's the question. Friends, we too have stood witness to the resurrection. We too have seen the promises of God come true. We too have had our lives changed, and yet here we are, impatiently waiting for life to just get back to normal. I don't know about you, but for me at least, normal wasn't working. Now the rest, um, I'll save for Sunday morning. But for now, I'd like to encourage you to mull this over, to think about these words in the context of your own life, to consider these questions. Has the resurrection really made a difference in your life? How has this pause in life now due to COVID made a difference in your life? And will our lives simply go back to normal? Or is God calling us to something new?